Alrighty everybody, how's it going? Pen here. And today I just want to take a quick look at this game that I've kind of forgot that I had on my computer. Uh, I'm emulating it through PCSX2, by the way. So it might be a bit janky. It's Resident Evil Dead Aim. Now this is like a one of those lesser known weird Resident Evil titles that I think was made primarily to be like... I think you could buy like a little zapper type gun, like a light gun, that you would play to work with this game. And I think that's what this entire... It was kind of a gimmick game, you know, like Resident Evil kind of got into doing. But this game is actually pretty interesting in terms of design, and I wanted to take a quick look at it because I think what this game does in terms of uh, survival horror design is actually really fascinating. In fact, I think if this game had actually, like, the same level of detail paid to... Or the same level of attention put into its uh, world design and its story as a game like Resident Evil 4 or 5 or, the, you know, the latter ones... You know, not in terms of, like, story quality, but in terms of, like, making it grand and making it look really good. Now, this game might have been actually pretty good, because as it stands, there's, like, no actual, like, environment interaction. I'll get into it so I can show you. But, uh, what I think this game does in terms of, uh, gameplay is really fascinating, actually. Especially for a, uh, early 2000s survival horror game. I'm just gonna skip all the cutscenes, because really, it's a late Resident Evil game, and the story is not worth getting into. So this is the standard camera view of the game. You can do a quick... You move with the left stick, although you can only move forward and back by default. And if you don't tap back, you do a quick turn. I think that was introduced in Resident Evil 3 for the GameCube, and then it's stuck around since then. Uh, really good feature. Um, most games, you double tap, or you press back and the run button to do a quick turn, but it's uh, one of the better features of the Resident Evil games. You can't really do without it. It might have been in uh, Resident Evil... For the Sega Dreamcast, actually. I forget which Resident Evil that was, but uh, I think it might have introduced it in that one. So, ooh, okay. So I think on hard you start with less items or something. Um, in my other save file I loaded up that I haven't touched in years, uh, I had like all the weapons and I had just started on this boat. Um, so yeah, this is the standard world interaction. We're on a boat right now, although I don't get how that fits in the story. I think Resident Evil's been on a boat three times so far in its history. Uh, Revelations, uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, and then this one, I think. So, first off, I really like this camera view, because it gives kind of that classic Resident Evil sense, but you're still aware enough of your surroundings to, you know, get your bearings. Your camera view is limited, but it's also atmos it's atmospheric, and it's it fits. It's a third-person view that gives you a view of your surroundings, but also feels like it fits. It feels like a less restricted version of Resident Evil 4's camera, which might be necessary because the way the shooting works, which is like this. You tap R1, you enter this, like, light gun view, almost. Like I was saying, this game is meant to be played with a light gun, like, you know, a wireless gun that you can aim at the TV, and that's how you aim. It has the Gun Con 2, I guess it's called. It looks like that. So what I think is actually really fascinating about this game is the way that these two movement styles play into each other. When you aim you have to hold down either L1, which makes your movement like this slow forward-backwards version. I guess it's, it's called sneaking in-game. I guess while you're sneaking, the awareness of zombies is smaller, so you have to get closer to them for them to notice you. And then if you hold L2, you do this one that allows you to side strafe. Now what's cool is that normally when you're aiming, if you try to move, you know, forward or backwards, you stop aiming. So you can look left and right with the left stick, or with the right stick, you get full movement around. But if you move the left stick forward or back, you exit aiming mode. But if you hold down that strafe button, L2, you got full range of motion. Which is really interesting. So, I actually really like how smooth the transition is between aiming and moving. You know, you can get in, aim, pop off a few rounds, and then quickly move out, or back up, and then, you know, get back in. It's interesting the way that works. Now, one of the first things that you'll notice might be missing from a Resident Evil game is that there's no flavor text. You know, I'm running around clicking on shit, and I can't interact with any of it. And this is a Resident Evil game. That's like the core of the Resident Evil and Silent Hill series is, you know, flavor text, reading what everything in the world around you is about. So that's kind of what I mean by uh, this game lacks the same attention to detail as other Resident Evil games, and that, you know, they didn't even bother they didn't bother putting in any flavor text. You kind of just do stuff. 
you basically just walk around and shoot. And I always kind of just walk around in sneak mode just to make sure that nothing actually, you know, pops out at me. Because what's interesting is that this game strews around a lot of corpses, but a lot of them don't actually get up as zombies, and if they do, they usually do it after some, you know, event triggers or some, you trick some flag, you know? If you know anything about game design, you do that event flag, and then, uh, then you can interact with stuff in the environment. You know, the game knows where you are, and then triggers stuff. So just looking at it, what I think is significant about this design approach, and I think what will become more apparent as I start to fight back against the zombie horde, is that this game is not easy, by any means. You know, aiming is not easy. It's difficult. Dodging enemies is not easy. It's rather difficult. But enemies, you know, they're zombies. They're slow. You can run right past them. Oh, shit. That kind of got me. I've always really enjoyed... A lot of people kind of hate on it in modern day, but I enjoy the loading screens between rooms in horror games because, you know, there's a hard dissonance between that room and this room. Where later in the game, or if you're familiar with old survival horror, this room can be full of angry, engaged enemies and it's terrifying, and then I run to this room and open the door, that loading screen is over, and I'm perfectly safe. And that kind of, or the opposite, where my room is perfectly safe and I walk in and then there's this shit going down. And I actually really enjoy that harsh dichotomy, or that harsh dissonance between the two uh, <laughs> dichotomies, I guess. Where, you know, one minute you're here, the next minute you're here, and you just kind of have to make do with your surroundings. If you heard, that body over there moved. I think that's the first zombie you fight in this area. Oh, yep. Uh... So now you can get a little taste of what shooting in this game is like. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. See, as you can see, this is not easy. And it's actually kind of, it's quite scary because of how not easy it is. Now actually, yep, I didn't actually kill the zombie. What I thought is interesting is that you can't look down very far. Oh, fuck, 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 get off, get off. Fuck, I'm just gonna run. You can't look down very far by default. Like, that's as far down as you can look. Unless there's a zombie on the ground in front of you. Then the game will be like, okay, trigger like a light railgun shooter cutscene where you can look at the ground, actually. But that scene right there... I only have 21 shots in total. That scene right there pointed out one of my biggest complaints about modern horror games versus old horror games. And that is that I didn't I didn't feel like I killed that enemy, so I ran away. I have limited ammo, so I just ran past the enemy. Now, you might, you know, a lot of horror games recently, you know, Evil Within, Dead Space, the modern Resident Evil games will tell you that limited ammo equals survival horror. But that's really, really not true. Ah, fucking, I'm getting wrecked. This game is actually really hard on hard difficulty. How am I doing? Caution. Uh, I don't know how the health system... Oops. X and circle are confirmed. Just like Jap... They just combine the Japanese and American traditions. But like I was saying, modern horror games seem to think that limited ammo automatically makes the game a horror game, or a survival horror game. But what they failed to understand is that what made it work in classic horror games was that this was an option. I have 12 rounds, I don't think that's enough. I'm just gonna run. And you're probably thinking, well you can run away in Dead Space, and in Evil Within, and in these other horror games. And no, you can't. In a lot of the areas in those games, there are gauntlet sections. A lot of the sections are gauntlet sections where you can't continue past an area until you kill the enemies. You know, in Dead Space, it's super common for the for the uh, intercom system to say like, oh, contamination detected, uh, remove the source of the contamination, then we'll release the locks. And it's really stupid because it's like, oh man, so this isn't survival, this is just elimination. Which is vastly different 
than this. Same thing with Evil Within, where there are areas where maybe you could sneak past enemies, but it wasn't reasonable to because A, the self system in that game wasn't very good, and B, it had the same problem where uh, certain areas you couldn't actually, you know, leave until you eliminated all the enemies. Oh. See, I'm pretty sure I can sneak past these guys if I stealth. I don't know if this is the door I'm supposed to go. Oh, God! See? That's what I'm talking about. That harsh cut between one minute I'm here and safe. Oh, fuck. And the next minute I'm here and not safe. Oh, okay, so I was supposed to go that way. Can I shoot your legs to make you fall over? Uh... can weaken you. See, but I think it's a, a damn shame that modern horror games are just so focused on, you know, eliminating enemies. Which there's nothing inherently wrong with. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting your player to interact with this environment. I realize that's one of the greatest flaws of the Silent Hill series, is that me knowing what to do, the enemies are essentially just time wasters. They're just stupid obstacles that I don't actually want to interact with. Versus a game like this, or Resident Evil 4, where combat is fun, the enemies are difficult and sometimes kind of scary, so it's kind of a trade-off between whether or not I want to actually risk taking them out or not. You know, it's... Combat should feel entertaining, but never necessary or uh, invasive, I suppose. And I'm trying to get back to that big room. Yeah, it's right there. And I think this game's flow, it's, you know, the way the mechanics work, really lend themselves well to that. I think if this game had a Silent Hill level of environment interaction exploration with this kind of gameplay, it'd be really fascinating. There's something here. Something that can be refined. And something that I'm really appreciating. And nobody cares about cutscenes. Or at least I don't frankly care about cutscenes in this game because it's a later Resident Evil title when they went all wacko conspiracy theory uh, not nearly self-aware B Hollywood film but yeah I honestly really enjoy this uh, this gameplay style like right now, I'm out of ammo, but I'm not worried about progressing because I know that I can just avoid the enemies. If I play it smart, I can kite them and just run right past them. Which is not something you actually get anymore. And the switch from third person to first person to do the shooting actually does cause quite a bit of a... Oh, I think I might be fucked in this hallway. Oh, yep, 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 oh god! Fuck, 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 fuck. Backing up. <laughs> but the the switch between first person and uh, third person, or vice versa, to uh, aim is actually really, really tense. And I really enjoy it, actually. Where in the third person, you're like, okay, that zombie's there on the ground. But then we switch to first, you're like, yeah, it's right fucking there. And that's a rather tense experience like this, let's see if I can get past. Is that ammo? Nope, not ammo. Now keep in mind, I, I, I made the weird decision to play this on hard. Ah, oh, fuck. I just started up another, I loaded up my last save file I had saved on here, and for some reason I had like hundreds of, like, literally every weapon in the game for some reason. And I was playing as a female, it asked if I wanted to change characters, so maybe that female character just starts with all the weapons. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, that's another thing. Sometimes I get the, uh... free walk stealth button confused with the strafing button. I honestly think the only reason you'd really need to strafe in third person is non-existent. I think strafing should just be how you move in this view, and then, uh, this is how you move in third person view. 
which is more akin to a uh, combination of Resident Evil 4 and the free walk aiming of uh, Resident Evil 6. But see, this is survival horror. I feel really tense taking on any enemies. Fuck, fuck. Okay. I know that this silence tango and has a... Oh shit! I thought that's a one-hit kill! Are you only when they're unaware? Uh. Oh, okay. But see, this is survival horror. This is actual survival horror. I actually like the safe room music a lot. But you don't see this anymore. This kind of a... Uh... Ooh, ammo. Crap load of ammo. This sheer degree of tense survival horror. Groovy. And it's a bit of a shame that... Oops, I'll write the other save. It's really a bit of a shame that such an interesting, like, movement concept was kind of wasted on such a throwaway Resident Evil game. Because this is interesting. I honestly think if they released a newer Resident Evil with this kind of gameplay mode, or this kind of gameplay style, this focus, it would do really well. Because this is what I miss from Resident Evil. If this had really nice graphics, and an actual decent or not good but engaging story it would be a really good game that would be Resident Evil 7 or what 5 and 6 should have been oh fuck that kinda got me um, and I honestly don't even know I haven't played far enough to see if there are any other enemies in the game But one focus... Oh, that's one thing that I always thought was really interesting. That little indicator tells you how close enemies are to you. It's kind of your little, uh... It's like a light railgun shooter. Oh, fuck. Reload. Reload! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Also, it's balanced. Sorry, I'm not talking. This is really tense. It's interestingly balanced where if an enemy is within a certain distance of you, critical hits will always knock them back. Like, that's how they balance them just inevitably getting close to you and cornering you. And I also vastly appreciate the fact that uh, hovering the cursor over corpses also shows enemy indicator. Because there are some corpses on the ground that you can shoot that will eventually get up, and you can trigger their interaction early by doing that. It's just... This is clever. This is clever, and it's rather balanced. It strikes a balance between exploration and combat. And the two aren't necessarily divorced from each other. You know, you can still kind of move around and try to navigate your environment while in this mode. Oh, the instant shot, like instant headshot stealth kills are probably turned off on this uh, difficulty. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it is just they can't see you before you shoot them in the head with this weapon. But yeah, I don't know if there are any other enemies besides zombies. But I honestly think what the Resident Evil series has been missing with its enemy design. It's not throwing bigger and more obnoxious and strong enemies at you, but rather throwing more tricky ones at you. I always thought that it would be interesting, because the most tense part of a survival horror game is the aiming. It's the... Ah, that was really close. And there are zombies of varying speeds. I was lucky that one wasn't fast enough to... Uh catch me while walking backwards. So some of them do kind of a light jog, and some of them kind of just shuffle faster. I always thought the uh, forward evolution of the survival horror enemy was not bigger or tougher enemies, but rather enemies that are more complex to engage. 
ones that have weak spots maybe you have to hit. Like, imagine if these zombies, kind of like Killer7, if you ever played Killer7. In Killer7, you kill the enemies by hitting their weak point, which you don't see until you hover their crosshair over. So when you engage an enemy and they're walking towards you, you have to kind of scan over them with the crosshair. Or, you know, you hit the button to scan their body, and it shows you briefly where the uh, weak spot is. But I think that approach of uh, making enemies more puzzles and tests of skill, rather than just... Uh... Oh, fuck. That got me. That really got me. <laughs> and see, that's another thing, is that I'm going through all these places really fast because there's no flavor text and there's nothing to actually look at, so it's rather boring. But I've always thought that uh, the forward evolution of making a horror game is not to make bigger, beefier, weirder looking enemies, but rather to make ones that are more complex and interesting to engage. And Evil Within kind of took steps towards that, where headshots weren't always guaranteed kills and some enemies just had, you know, perpetually uh, apparent instant kills when they hit you. Like, all the bosses in that game were all one-hit kills, which was a poor design choice, in my opinion. But I've always thought, you know, having an enemy that you had to do something with, you know, like maybe get him to try and attack you, and then grab something and get stuck, and then, uh, attack his weak point from behind, or, you know, interesting stuff. Not just, you know, hey, this enemy has more health and deals more damage than the others, because that's just silly. That's just poor design. Uh, I'm honestly kind of lost. Have I gotten anything? I've been talking and I haven't been paying any attention to what I've gotten. Ah, an ID card. Oh, so I can probably use that on that uh, staircase swiper. So yeah, I guess that's it. That's, uh, this is Resident Evil Dead Aim. Ah, I didn't even really introduce it properly, did I? Huh. This is a really casual thing. I was just looking through my old games library and saw this, and was really, really satisfied with how it felt to play. After spending a lot of time this quarter, or this season, playing a lot of other horror games, and, uh, kind of just taking a look through the history of horror games and the evolution of them, I think this game is an interesting kind of experimentation that you don't see too often. Or at least that it had some simple ideas that I think change the general pace of horror games greatly. It's just I've been playing a lot of really mediocre horror games. A lot of same, same horror games have come out in the past few years, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's clones and Slender clones that all don't really do too much to the gameplay in terms of, you know, player interaction where, um, you know, Slender, what's your interaction? walking around and trying to beat the game fast. That's your interaction. There's not much to actually do to affect your fate. Versus a game like this, where your skill does sincerely come into play. Oh, shit, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Get off, get off, get off. Those are the faster moving zombies that I was mentioning. Oh my god, no, no, no. Collision. Okay. Collision boxes got wonky there. Ooh, semi-auto handgun. Nice. <gasps> oh my god, that was a, that was a sincere gasp if you've ever heard one. Oh, this gun's nice. You just pull the trigger as fast as you can shoot. Or you can just hold it down. And I like that too, that's a nice touch, where you're never actually sure if they're dead or not. Honestly, the fact that they're throwing so many guns at you at the beginning of the game is just kind of representative of their inability to balance this game very well. But I think that's mostly due to just the lack of enemy variety. Oh shit, when you're seriously hurt you can't run? Ooh! Ooh! -hoo. Sorry, I haven't gotten this far. This is a fascinating gameplay change. Immediately, the moment I start running low on health, and, you know, escaping onslaughts becomes a problem, they throw a gun at me. Essentially, hey, this gun will get you out of trouble, but it's gonna th burn through your ammo. That's clever. I was gonna...
comment on how imbalanced this game is, but maybe that right there was just an example of how they subtly balanced it. Maybe that wasn't intentional to be used like that. You know what? I haven't touched the D-pad. Oh, the D-pad's just another movement pad. I was gonna say, if the D-pad was a quick weapon like, switch, that would have been perfect. Honestly, if this game, if another game came out like this, or similar to this, with better environmental design, a much more enticing story, deeper atmosphere, deeper exploration, lots of flavor text, lots of stuff to explore, if it had, like, in-game pause, like, no pause, except for a pause screen, if your inventory was done in-game, if your map was done in-game, maybe not the map, I'm, the, I'm of two minds of that concept. But can you imagine how tense it would be if I, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. how tense it would be between switching between this weapon, this handgun, which is the strongest, versus, you know, that, uh, there we go, that rapid fire one, which is good for getting me out of, uh, tight situations. Can you imagine the tense atmosphere, or the, you know, the tense feeling of having to switch between a rapid fire, get out of jail free card gun, versus a, uh, or a, you know, an ammo muncher versus a, uh, critical hit dealing, uh, handgun versus a silenced handgun, which is good for taking out enemies when you're being stealthy. There's something to be said there. There's something there. I'm, I'm adoring this. I'm discovering layers of death where I don't think they thought they had death, because it's Capcom. I honestly don't have much faith in Cap Capcom in terms of design. At least not these days. But, uh... Yeah, this game is just fascinating. The combat feels tense, and if they had more varied uh, enemy types, it would feel even more tense. This is just a really... This game is a really good example of uh, how interesting and entertaining experimentation in horror games can be. And I think that's a very interesting thing that sets horror games apart is that they function very fundamentally differently from other games, where other games are meant to be not just entertaining or just, you know, something to be played and entertained with, but uh, I think horror games have a, uh, a license to get away with a lot more in terms of the way they make their player interact and feel. You know, Silent Hill 2 is a painful and dark and sad experience. And Resident Evil is this, Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, and all those classics are a tense and dark and gritty experience, you know, claustrophobic. It's just horror games have a license to get away with a lot more than other games. I'd probably do the other side. So I enjoy uh, ruminating over them more than I do other games. In terms of story, in terms of a lot of things, they just have a lot that they're able to do and get away with that I, uh, am greatly appreciative and privy to. And honestly, the lack of... Okay, I was gonna say, the lack of HUD in this game is pretty good. You get a HUD when you aim like this. But I've always thought it'd be really good to make a horror game similar to this. Maybe like Resident Evil 3.5, if you've seen that gameplay. Where certain areas have a locked camera view, other areas have the third-person view. Maybe do that with no HUD. And I've always had this really good idea that I got from Silent Hill 3, where you can tell the player their health without having to show them a uh, health screen during, or health menu, or icon during gameplay by making the controller vibrate. If you played Silent Hill 3, you know that when you're hurt, the uh, controller will vibrate like a heartbeat, and it's actually a really gross feeling heartbeat. They got it down to a T, where one side of the controller vibrates like the intake pump, and then the other part of the controller vibrates, like the output pump, and it, or, you know, the valves of the heart. And it feels fantastic, and it gets harder and more disturbing as you uh, get more hurt. I always thought it'd be really interesting to do something like that. But in Silent Hill 3, kind of like the uh, heart pinging noise of uh, Legend of Zelda, it gets kind of annoying over time, where you're like, okay, I get it, I'm hurt, there's no enemies around, just knock it off. Um, ooh, a shotgun, okay, this is probably a, uh, gauntlet area. 
And I don't, you know, I probably don't have to get the shotgun unless there's a key around here. I want to uh, check that actually. Because if it's just, hey, if you want the shotgun, you can grab it here. I'd be super down with that. Where it's my choice to pick up this weapon and have to fight this gauntlet rather than, hey, you're locked in here, but you need to do this to progress. What was I just talking about? Resident Evil 3.5? Almost gone, almost gone. Got it! Yes! That's what I'm talking about. That was tense as shit. Yeah, so Resident Evil 3.5D were locked camera angles some places, free camera angles other places. Always thought that would be a good gameplay style. So yeah, I'm just I'm just rambling. This is a casual thing, but uh, yeah. I mean, if you can get your hands on this game, I ripped a uh, PS2 copy of it I had in my uh, library over here, and I'm emulating it because my PS2 is broken, and also so I can record it proper. But uh, if you can get your hands on a copy of this game, I kind of recommend it. This is an interesting experimentation in the uh, series, and also just in horror games in general. But I think it's oh god. Okay. Resident Evil Dead Aim, everybody. Check it out. It's good. It's pretty nifty.